So the Samsung Galaxy S25 FE has just officially came out. So let's go ahead and do a quick introduction on how to use this particular phone. Now, if you've never used any Samsung phone before, hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of how to use it. Now, this is a very good phone. It's a very big phone as well. And before you actually start using this phone, as always, I would recommend putting some sort of case and or some sort of screen protector inside of this phone before you actually start using it because that's going to be one of the most important things you can do. So keep that in mind, put a screen protector, put a case on your phone, that's a super important thing. Now, looking around the phone on the front side, you're getting a very big size display. So it's a 6.7 inch display, so it is actually pretty big. You have a front facing camera at the front, you have a fingerprint sensor in the display as well, and that's kind of it. It also is an always on display, so you can configure it to kind of show some information here and there when you kind of tap it. On the left side, you have nothing on the left side of this phone, so it's completely bare bones, it's completely empty. On the top side, you do have some microphone holes right there, so you can go and input your, you know, you can talk to the microphone and that's something you can kind of do there. On the bottom, you have your USB Type-C port. So you have a USB Type-C port and you have a SIM card tool here as well. So you can go through and input your SIM card right inside of this area and your speaker go right here. But inside the SIM card, you can also, I believe, use an eSIM inside of your phone too. So if you have an electronic SIM, you can transfer that over, or you can still use a physical SIM on most models of the Galaxy S25 FE. On the right side, you have your power button, as well as your volume up and down button. So if you want to quickly toggle down or up your volume, use the top button. If you want to turn on or off your phone, you can use this side button here. It also doubles as like a Gemini or a Bixby button. On the back side, you have your pretty nice feeling back, right? It's a frosted glass back, I believe, which feels really good. You're also getting your triple camera set up on the backside. These phones are equipped with wireless charging and reverse wireless charging. So if you wanna reverse wirelessly charge other devices from your phone, well, you have that type of capability right here, which is another really cool thing. Then we make our way back onto the front. Now there's a few different ways of kind of going through and kind of setting up your particular device. So number one, there's a couple ways to turn it on. You can double tap it to turn it on or off, just like how I did right here. You can literally just double tap the display and it'll turn on the display or turn off the display. Now you can also use that power button on the side as well. So you can tap on the power button to turn it on or you can tap on the power button to turn it off. So those are two different ways of kind of turning on or off your particular device from that particular standpoint as well. Now, once you turn it on, you'll come into your lock screen. So this lock screen basically has really good high level information on your device. So at the top, you have your status bar. So basically just tell you kind of what you know status your phone is in, your Wi-Fi, high level information on your phone. Then you also have your time and your date right here in the top as well. So you can easily go through, quickly see kind of the time that you're in, the date that you're in as well. And that is something that is really cool inside of your device as well. Then you'll also get any notifications that are going on inside of your phone right here. If you have any text, missed calls, emails, Instagram messages, anything like that, that information will basically showcased or be showcased right inside of this panel. So you can always go through once again, kind of manage your phone from these kind of pop-ups that happen right here. And that is a very cool other thing that you can kind of do in this situation as well. And you also have some quick toggles at the bottom. If you want to quickly jump into phone or camera, you can do that here too. Now, if you ever want to change anything directly on your lock screen, you can customize this whole entire lock screen by holding down on an empty portion of your lock screen like this, and you will basically come into this panel. So here is where you can quickly kind of toggle around and change some things within your particular device. I'd recommend every single person to kind of go through and start kind of customizing this device, you know, for the most part. So you can kind of go through customize it in a lot of different ways. And I think there's a lot of different things you can kind of do here. So have some fun, start adding widgets, start customizing it. That's kind of a big thing I'd recommend every single user to do inside of their particular device. Whenever you're done, you can click on done in the top right corner. And to get out of your lock screen, all you have to do is just swipe up and you will basically come into your home screen. So if the first part was the lock screen, this is the home screen. The home screen is where you're going to be every single time you come home. The top is going to be your status bar again, just the same thing. You have your other information that's kind of going on within your device. These are called widgets and these are called applications or app icons. 
So your top, these widgets and app icons, you can move around wherever you want to by holding down on an app icon and then kind of moving it around. So again, you can hold it down like this and you can kind of just move it around like this. You can also make applications or widgets bigger or smaller, depending on what you're going to want to do. And you can also remove app icons and move them around by holding down on an icon and kind of moving it around like that. So that is kind of an option that you kind of have there, which is really cool. You can kind of swipe through and kind of add different pages of applications and things like that. And then you have your dock right there. Now, if you want to see all the applications that you have inside of your particular phone, all you have to do is swipe up from the bottom to the top and you will see all the applications on your phone. You can swipe around and kind of get into different pages and start to see all the applications. If you like an app, you can click on it and you can go home. If you want to go back to your home panel, you can just swipe down from here. Now, Android has a lot of applications that you can use right out the gate. So if you want to go inside of the Play Store, you click on the Play Store. If you want to make a phone call, click on the phone call, messages for messages, and camera to take photos. Now, once you open up an application, let's say we open up the Play Store. Well, how do you come back home? Well, there's a couple of ways to do it. You have this bar at the bottom that's either going to show you this nav bar or it's going to be a, a solid white line that you can just swipe up. So if you have the nav bar, all you have to do is click on that middle icon to go home. If you have a bar at the bottom, you can swipe up from the bottom and it will take you home. Now, if you're in an application and you want to see all the historical applications that you've already opened up, let's say you've opened up all these apps and you want to see all the apps you have open, that center bar with the three lines is to basically do that. So you can swipe through all the different applications that you are into, and you can swipe out of these apps if you want to save some memory. If you're inside of an application and you basically go through and you go inside of a different page and you want to go to the previous page, you can click on the back button up here or you can click on the built-in back button of your Android nav bar right here and it will also take you back into the previous panel as well. So you have a couple of different ways of kind of maneuvering around, but that's kind of one of the big ways of kind of using your particular Android device are these nav bar buttons. If you click home, you will basically come back home. Now, your status bar also contains a lot of information. If you swipe down on the left side of your status bar, you will basically come into your notification drawer. So here is where you will basically see a bunch of notifications from your Android device. So with your S25 FE, you'll just see a bunch of information right here, and you can tap on them to expand it further. Or you can swipe down from the top right corner to get into your quick toggles. These quick toggles contain a lot of quick little settings that you can kind of modify. So you can click on Wi-Fi to turn on or off Wi-Fi, increase or decrease the brightness, increase or decrease the sound. And you can customize this panel by clicking on the customize edit pencil icon right there. You can click on the power button to restart your phone and things like that. And you can jump into settings by clicking in settings. So settings is actually where we're going to go to next. So let's swipe up from the bottom and let's find our settings application. So tap under the settings application. Now this settings app contains a lot of really good information that you're going to need within your device. So go through, swipe through, and just try to get a good feeling of your particular device. So you can always go through and you know click on wallpaper and styles, security and privacy. A lot of these things are self-explanatory. One big one I'd recommend every single person to kind of get used to is this one under software update. So tap on software update, and then click on download and install. And I'd recommend every single person downloading and installing the latest update available for your device. That is kind of one of the most important things I'd recommend doing. Because if you don't download and install the latest update, that can be one of the main problems you might run into. So go through, try downloading and installing the latest update available for your device. And that is another thing I'd recommend doing in this case to keep your phone kind of, you know, as secure as possible. So that pretty much covers it up there. Hopefully you have a better understanding of how to use your Samsung Galaxy S25 FE. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.